Hi guys, Craig and Annette. I was camping. We were having a chat um, about a week ago, I guess, about the air conditioning and how I was surprised that, it, uh, that we were able to run it off our inverter. And that reminded me that we had a few questions over Easter about batteries and how long they should last and, and how you look after your lithium batteries. So this video is going to be specifically about lithium batteries. If you've got older style AGM batteries, totally different. Um, what we're going to talk about in this video is specific to lithium. So one of the things to consider with lithium batteries is that trying to determine their voltage, uh, sorry, their, their capacity through voltage is not entirely successful. Um, lithium batteries tend to hold a high voltage for quite a long time and then they drop off very quickly. So working out your battery capacity by voltage not a great way to do it. It's really worthwhile investing in a proper battery monitor. Now a battery monitor usually has a shunt um, a, or a smart shunt. Uh, either way, what happens is you have one negative comes off your battery and goes to the shunt and every other negative connection goes to the other side of the shunt. Now what that enables the battery monitor to do is to report to you how many volts, how many amps, both in and out. Uh, it can estimate the number of hours that you've got left remaining um, before you run out of charge based on your current um, consumption. Um, and and it because it's showing you voltage, uh, sorry, amps in as well, you can really see what your soul is doing. Now over Easter, um, quite a few people had problems where they, they weren't being able to maintain their charge. And that's quite simply because in an overcast situation, you won't be getting much in from your solar. But you don't know that unless you can actually see. And the only way to see power is to use a monitor that can actually show you visually what's going on. So yesterday we were sitting here in overcast conditions and I was getting only one amp out of our solar on the roof. So yeah, that sort of highlights the importance of having some kind of um, gauge or battery monitor that you can see what's going on. So the specific monitor that we use is a Victron one and um, I'll just show you a photo of that. And the Victron monitor does exactly what I said earlier. It shows me the amps both in and out. It shows me the voltage. It shows me the watts in and out. It shows me an estimated number of hours remaining at my current consumption. And it also shows me uh, current amp hour. So it is a lot of information and it's very useful. The model we've got has Bluetooth as well, so I can bring up that detail on my phone. And um, it really does give us that opportunity to know exactly what's going on. So the other thing to remember with uh, lithium batteries is that they're actually flat at about, well, not completely flat, but considered flat at about 12.5 volts. So that once again highlights why a simple voltmeter is not the best way to monitor your battery consumption or estimate how much battery you've got left. For those of you that have had lithium batteries shut down or you've heard about a lithium battery shut down, let's just explain what's going on there. With lithium batteries, they're made up of a group of cells and each cell has a voltage range up to about 4.2 volts. The problem with the, the lithium battery is that if that cell gets down to 3 volts or lower, generally speaking, it will never recharge again. It's, it, it spells the death sentence for that battery so, or that particular cell. So what battery ma manufacturers have done in the batteries that you find in your campers and caravans, not only do they have the individual lithium cells wired together to give you 12 volts, they also put in the system or into the box, the battery box, a battery management system now that's just an electronic board that controls the balancing of all the cells, but it also has safety mechanisms built in. And if it sees that any one cell has gone down below a threshold voltage, and I think most manufacturers set that around about 3.1 or 3.2 volts, it 
physically disconnects the battery posts from the cells inside the battery. So essentially, if you put a, um, a voltmeter across the battery, it will appear zero voltage and you would think that the battery was dead. But what's happened is that the battery management system inside has physically disconnected from the posts to make sure that you can't accidentally discharge that battery down to the critical point where it will never recharge again. So then comes the challenge of how do I wake that battery up again if it's shut down? You would think maybe you can just turn on a battery charger and start charging the battery. But unfortunately, most battery chargers these days are intelligent chargers and they won't output any charge current until they see a battery connected, which means that they need to see voltage. So if we can't just plug in a battery charger, how are we going to do that? On the StarVision campers and caravans, as they arrive, the Anderson plug on the drawbar is cabled back through a, a diode, that, and that's just simply to stop the camper battery pushing power back through to the tow vehicle. It's a one-way flow valve, if you like, is what a diode is. So back through the diode and directly to the battery. So in an unmodified StarVision camper, or caravan, or if your camper or caravan is wired that way, then you would simply plug in the Anderson to your charge vehicle, sorry, to your tow vehicle, start your tow vehicle, and you'll have current flow back through to the batteries and that battery will wake up. If like us, you've installed a DC-DC charger, that DC-DC charger is probably also intelligent and it's not going to provide any charge current back to the battery until it sees it. So you've got another problem. And that's a separate subject, so I'm gonna cross that next week. What about charging lithium batteries? Just remember, if you've got lithium batteries, your charger should have a lithium profile and it should be set to that lithium profile. Now, on charging, back in the days of AGM, um, and lead acid batteries, people would recommend that you leave your caravan on charge all the time when it's in storage. With lithium, it's exactly the opposite. Lithium batteries are best stored around about the 40 to 80% mark. Um, ideally, you don't store a lithium battery at 100% and you definitely don't store it down the bottom end near the 0% that will decrease the life of the battery. Now, storing, storing at 100%, let's face it, if you've been away and by the time you drive back home, your vehicle's probably charged the battery back to 100%. It's not a big deal. Don't feel like you have to drain it completely, but you certainly don't want to leave that battery on charge because lithium batteries don't like to be constantly trickle charged when they're in storage. So if possible, store your battery around that 50% to 70, 80% mark, and it'll give you many years of good service. Don't leave your battery on charge when you get home and, when you, and your van's in storage. And every now and again, just check your battery monitor and see what it's doing. Have a look at what your percentage is. And if you find you're getting down below 50% while you're in storage, then you can give it a little bit of a charge, get it up around about that 80% mark again, and then turn your charges off and isolate the battery again. When it comes to discharging lithium batteries, most of the lithium batteries that are, or the drop-in style batteries that, are, that come in your campers and caravans, most of those, the internal battery management system that we talked about, they have a 100 amp maximum. So ma maximum draw rate. So the other thing that'll cause your lithium battery to go to sleep or sh into shutdown mode is if you draw too many amps from one battery. So let's say, for example, if I only had one battery and it has a 100 amp maximum draw, maximum continuous draw, we plug in our coffee machine, which pulls uh, 2000 watts, uh, it's going to overload that battery and the battery management system will shut that battery down. It's not gonna damage the battery, and that's what the battery management system's for, that's built into it, um, but it's not the best practice. So if you're running a high power requirement, 
for example, we've got a 3000 watt inverter, that means that I may need up to around 300 amps. Ideally, I would have three batteries in parallel. So each battery is capable of 100 amps, so that's where I get my 300 amp continuous power draw from. In reality, we do have a 3000 watt inverter, but we don't have anything that uses that much power. So I'm quite happy with the two batteries that will combined be capable of providing 200 amps continuous draw. So for now, I think we've covered everything. And what we recommend is that if you have a lithium battery system, you install a good battery monitor and you learn how to read it so that you know exactly where you stand with batteries. You know what's coming in, you know what's going out, you know how many hours you've got left and you never find yourself short of battery. And if you do find yourself with shut down batteries, don't panic. It's unlikely on a lithium battery that you're going to have killed the battery. It's just a matter of waking it up again. So thanks for watching. Uh, next week we'll show you how to wake a lithium battery if you have a DC-DC charger installed and it's not recognizing any of the charges.